hello everyone uh, hope you're doing okay today this flight is uh, very special today I am making it for a friend who just celebrated his birthday David this uh, one is for you and I hope uh, you were able to enjoy your simulator session so this is actually a flight we're going to perform with the uh, Boeing 737-800 uh, should be the same one uh, you have spent a session on with uh, on your simulator so anyway uh, I hope you enjoy it and happy belated birthday by the way okay here we go we're going to go into our cockpit of our 737-800 cockpit is cold and dark so in a sense this is for us the first flight of the day so we're going to do our uh, Preliminary cockpit uh, inspection. Uh, we have uh, engine levers, both are cut off. Throttles idle. Parking brake is set. Landing gear lever is down. Okay. Now we can come up on the overhead panel. As you can see, the GPU is a uh, connected and available we're gonna click it online we're gonna set on the battery there you go all right and immediately we're gonna come to the upper panel and we're going to align the IRSs and to align the IRSs we put it on align when this light on DC goes off we put it on nav same process for the right hand IRS nav there you go all right now we can uh, set the yaw damper to on navigation so the IRS switches normal display switches normal cross feed is closed right now fuel pumps off for the time being Cabin utility and IFE passenger seat both are on. APU is off for the time being. The lighting panel, no lights needed outside of the position lights. Okay. Equipment cooling is normal. We're going to set the fasten seat belt sign to auto. We're going to arm the emergency exit lights and uh, we're going to test window heat power test checked windows heat overheat now we can put on the windows heats okay anti-ice and engine anti-ice both off uh hydraulic pumps if it is the first flight of the day of the day we're going to turn on the hydraulic pumps so that we can uh, check for uh, hydraulic fluid leaks during the inspection of the aircraft. Alright, and we can come to the last panel. We're going to set trim air to on. Uh, for the time being, the packs will set them on auto. APU bleed can stay off for the time being. And uh, we're going to go back down okay all right so uh, we're going to set a little bit of lighting because by the time we uh, get to our destination airport which is Atlanta today from uh, Charlotte it will be sun down okay one more light to set Alright, now we are ready to uh, program our FMC. We first go to FMC and uh, we're going to check our navigate navigation data. We have the latest ARAC cycle, which is 1904, the fourth one of the year, 2019, from March 28th until April 24th, 19. Then we're going to initialize our position, which is uh, Charlotte Douglas. And we are uh, at uh, gate uh, Bravo 12 today. No, we are at gate Charlie 11. Charlie 11. And we're going to go to page 2. We're going to use the uh, 
position of the GPS system of the right and we're going to set it in as a position of the aircraft and compare to the position of the uh, or the longitude and latitude of the airport it's almost the same except for the north latitude is 12.8 against 13.1 okay for our route we're going to go from Charlotte Douglas to Atlanta and we will be expecting runway 36 uh, center for the time being unless uh, the controller changes that and our flight number is uh, American Airline 476 it is set And we'll come back to that in a little bit. So everything is set. Uh, we're going to start our flight on our second screen. Okay. So all of that was set. Now we can uh, check the weather information here we're going to check uh, on 12200 going to check the ADIS Kilo Charlie Lima Tango Airport information Foxtrot 2152 Sulu weather wind 348 at 13 348 at 13 visibility 10 sky condition few clouds at 5 1900 temperature 15 dew point minus 1 altimeter 2998 advice on initial contact you have information There you go Foxtrot. information Foxtrot is a uh, current Okay our altimeter Kilo. is 2998 which we're setting right now to 9998 Okay, we can turn on the flight directors and we're going to see who's online, which controllers and we are in uh, Charlotte, there is uh, Charlotte uh, ground which is on 121.9 Okay, Charlotte ground is on 121.9 There you go Okay, we're going to do a few tests. We're going to test the oxygen. Magnificent. Okay, so the oxygen is tested. Now we can... Uh, Okay, the IRS are now aligned. We're going to test the uh, TCAS, Traffic Collision Avoidance System. There you go. And on the navigation display, all the aircraft are drawn. Okay, the TCAS test passed. Alright, so there you go. Information Sierra is uh, current. Information Sierra. And the winds. We don't need them, we already have them. Okay, departure runway 36 center, 36 right. Pre departure clearance do not require a readback, include call sign in all ATC readbacks. 
I don't think we have received a pre-departure clearance. No pre-departure clearance for us. Okay. Alright, so uh, now we're going to continue programming our aircraft before uh, asking for clearance. We're going to go to departure. Today we have a very short uh, route of flight, so we're just going to go directly to our standard instrument departure, which is the Bob Z4 with a Tinsley transition. And we're going to then uh, take our arrival, which is the uh, Levi. No, we're going to take the Aussie One Star with a Levi arrival. And Atlanta is landing west. So we're going to expect 27 left with a transition at Sliver. Root, you can execute. There you go. And we'll, uh, we are going to set a fix for uh, Atlanta. Basically, the fix is going to give us some... Uh, reference points a radius of 30 miles within the airport 10 miles within the airport and 4 miles within the airport and then uh, we can uh, after that uh, I think we go to uh, init our gross weight today is 149,000 pounds and reserve fuel, what do we have for reserve fuel? Let's hide the yoke. And we're going to be pulling our charts. For reserve fuel today, uh, we have uh, 6,600 pounds. 6.6. Our cost index is 74. Our flight level is 360 with cruise winds from 260 at 89 knots. And the uh, ISA deviation is 3 degrees Celsius. There you go. We can execute then we can set n1 uh, limit and such okay we have uh, 133 almost 134,000 pounds basically we're 4,000 pounds below our max weight so therefore okay the temperature was 15 today or is 15 uh, the runway here is somewhat long so we're going to do uh, Look at this right now, 99% of available engine power without any temperature derate. So we're going to take 39 degrees derate and that's going to drop it to 96.2. And we're going to take uh, TO1. Now we're back, we're down to 92% for takeoff power. But that's how we preserve uh, engine life. No need for uh, using the entire available power when the runway is really long. Flaps 5, our trim is 4902 units, V1142, VR143, V2148. So we're going to set our trim with the trim wheel. So 4902, 5, we got it. Okay, we can bring back the yoke. Okay, 142. Eight. One sixty-three will be our climb out speed. Basically, V two plus uh, fifteen. We're going to set on auto throttle. We're going to set on V nav, and since uh, we're going to get uh, vectors, we're going to see initially. On our charts for our departure okay well before we do that we have to ask for our clearance uh, prior to doing that let's go ahead and get uh, 
a couple more tests. We're going to be testing uh, the fire suppression system. There you go. And then we also have the uh, indicator light. And then we're gonna check the discharge bottles one and two. All right, we're going to check the lightings for our AP disconnect and then AP disconnect two. Then we're going to check all the lights in our cockpit. Magnificent, everything is lit. And we're going to start boarding the aircraft. All right, we can stop the light test and we can reset the fuel used. There you go. All right, now is a good time to uh, turn on our fuel pumps and we can start the APU. There you go, while the APU is uh, starting, we're going to set the pressurization panel, 36,000 is our uh, cruise altitude. Then we also have uh, Atlanta landing altitude is uh, 1050. Okay, the EGT for the APU is rising. When it comes back down to 400, it will be available. Right now, as you can see, the ground power is connected. APU gen right now are not providing any power. The APU gen uh, also has uh, zero volts at this time. Okay, now the APU gen is available with 118 volts, but we're not drawing any amps. When we set the APU online, now you can see we're pulling about 74 amps. Awesome, right? Okay, now we're going to test the uh, max speed warning in case of overspeed and then the stall speed warning there you go magnificent while we're here we're gonna test the flight recorder magnificent all right now we are going to get connected to ground and we're gonna be asking for our clearance Ground, good evening. American 476, ready for IFR to Atlanta. We have information Sierra. Uh, American 476? Affirm, American 476. Okay, American 476, you see, I don't have a flight phone file and, um... Also, don't show your call sign anyone. Okay, check in on our flight plan, American 476. Okay, he says he does not have our flight plan. Weird. Thought we had filed it, but we're going to double check. We are online without a flight plan, so what we're going to do, we are going to send it directly through VATSIM. Okay, our aircraft type is 738, departure will be KCLT to K. ATL, flight level 360, our cruising speed 459 knots, our departure time is uh, 2230, oh it's actually we're late, alright so let's make it uh, 2242, well 2230, and actual will be 2240. 
and we have uh, 2 hours and 42 minutes of fuel on board and our flight time is 50 minutes and we have uh, Bob Z oh with the transition at Tinsley Levi and Uzi one as the arrival so we are ready we can receive voice then we are ready to sign our flight plan which is done we're gonna give him a minute for the system to update and we're going to ask for our clearance okay while we're waiting for that to happen we're going to test the uh, ground proximity warning system Okay, we're going to set on the APU bleed. And then while the co-pilot is doing those tests, we can greet the passengers. Well, hey, Shaman, uh, front flight deck, we'd like to add a walking board. Anticipate possibly uh, some light bumps or some uh, choppy airs. We can climb out to, as a precaution, keep our flight attendants uh, seated for a few minutes. Make sure we know... Uh, you know what that ride's going to be like uh, before uh, they get up. Also appreciate it if everyone would uh, remain in our seats uh, during that time. Thanks for being with us today. Okay. An American, uh, I think it was 45, just be advised. Um, it looks like we don't have anything but the call sign, so I don't show a number next year, uh, American call sign. Wilco, we're fixing that ground, American 476. Okay. We're going to disconnect. Going to plug in. Connect. This is what we forget, 476. Connect. There you go. And ground American 476. I believe we have the flight plan sorted out. Looking for IFR clearance to Atlanta now. A okay, tower is going to be on 118.1. There you go. Brown American four seventy six. He went dark on me. Okay, while uh, he's uh, waiting to respond, we're going to step into our flight plan to verify that everything is uh, continuous all the way. Okay, we have vectors on takeoff. And then we have a uh, discontinuity. Basically, we're going to go direct from Levi to Tinsley and execute. There you go. That's our arrival. All the way to the runway. Ground American 476.
Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. Okay, the tug is on the way. Ground services. We are going to disconnect the GPU. And we can set on anti collision lights. Ladies and gentlemen, the boarding door is now closed. Flight attendants, prepare your doors for departure. Cross check, fair price job, stand by for all calls. I'm going to send him a message. Alright, looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. Okay, runway heading is uh, 003. Oh, wrong knob. 163 was our climb out speed and runway heading is 003 welcome aboard captain toes connected bypass pens inserted go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go american 476 show ground how do you hear Five by five, four seventy six. American four seventy six, very good. You are clear to the Atlanta Hartsville Airport via the Bosby Fortier. Timbley transmission, then a spiral. Our departure maintain eight thousand. Expect flight level three zero zero one three minutes after departure. Departure speed one two six point one five. Squawk six three four four. Clear to the Atlanta Hartsfield uh, International Airport, Bob Z4, Tinsley Transition. Climb and maintain uh, 8,000. Uh, expect 30,000 uh, 10 minutes upon departure. Departure frequency on 126.15 and the squad code is 6344, American 476. American 476, very good. Uh, Bob Z4, Tinsley Transition, Climb and maintain 8,000. 36 center for departure, push and start our discretion, 476. Okay, we have some changes to our cruise altitude. Okay, 8000 is our initial uh, climb out. IFR clearance to Fort Lauderdale is found, American 537. And then our American 537 transponder ground. code is uh, 6. Three, four, four. There you go. Alright, we're gonna have to reprogram our FMC because our cruise altitude changed to 30,000, flight level 300. That's not a bad change at all. Clear to Fort Lauderdale via the Icon 4 departure, Nooks transition. Climb and maintain 8,000. Six three four six and departure frequency is one two six point one five American five three seven. All right, so for runway three six center departure, climb climb, uh, climb at a heading of zero uh, zero three to twelve thousand and sixty feet, then on a heading of uh, three thirty or as assigned. And, uh, the cruise altitude should that be flight level three seven zero instead of three six zero American five three seven. So I'm going to set a heading of 330 right now, unless he changes it. Now we're going to do heading select. I did make if I could go either one, I was just thinking 37 was the right one, but if you want me to do 36, I can do that fine, no problem. Okay. Uh, I believe uh, we are uh, ready for pushback. You can see the push tug is connected. Okay, parking brake is released. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. All right, and we can also set the the uh, timer. 
Okay, today we will first start engine number two, or the right engine, and we'll start engine number one afterwards. Backs coming off. Engine start switch number two to ground. And we have N2 rotation. 25% or above, we're going to introduce fuel. There you go. Now we can watch N1 rise. And also the engine 2 EGT is rising. Starter cut off. And we have a good start on engine number 2. Okay, same process for engine number 1. Okay, N2 is rising. There you go. 25% N2. You. Now we have uh, N1 rising and also the EGT starter cut off. We have a successful start on engine number one. Magnificent. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. Okay, parking brake is set. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Not a problem. Okay, so 3-6 center for our departure today, basically we're going to take a right upon exiting the apron, we're probably going to take Mike Foxtrot, or Mike Echo, Mike Echo. Alright, after he gives us a signal, oh, we're going to do the after start checklist okay generators on APU bleed off fax auto isolation valve auto probe heat switches on engine start switches continuous and turn on the runway and uh, taxi lights the runway turn off lights and taxi lights and we can set our transponder to alt off okay we have received the signal we're going to be setting uh, auto brake to RTO or rejected takeoff we're going to set flaps 5 there you go and we can uh, check supposed to be clear on the left <laughs> and clear on the right ground American 476 request taxi to 36 center American 476 Roman 36 center taxi via Bravo runway 23 and echo in its you say taxi via Bravo runway 23 and uh, echo American 476 American 476 that's affirmative. Okay. We're gonna taxi via Bravo. Runway two three and echo. All this time I have been flying. Okay, ground, we have uh, Sierra Golf, runway 23 and Echo to runway uh, 36 uh, center, American 476. Now he said Golf. Uh, American 476 negative, that was for different aircraft. Uh, your 36 center view, Bravo 23 and Echo. Bravo 23 Echo, 476. 
Okay. Okay, flight controls check. Pull left. Pull right. Pull down. Pull up. Rudder. Pull left. Pull right. Neutral. Okay, flight controls check completed. Okay, we're going to uh, test. Uh, okay, for now I'm going to set the flaps back to zero. And we're going to do the takeoff config check by advancing the throttle. Actually, we can leave the flaps on five because our parking brake is set. So we're going to actually get uh, the takeoff config horn and we're also going to get this light. It's going to be lit up over here. There you go. Takeoff config. All right. So we're good. So now we can uh, get rid of the parking brake. And we're going to begin our taxi. Clear left. Clear right. All right. Bravo. And runway 23 and echo. Pretty weird. So we're going to get out of the apron towards uh, here. Take Bravo and be on the runway. Okay, we're going to set terrain radar on the ND. Look at it. Some eye candy, huh? Okay, so Bravo will be our next uh, left. Should be right here. Alright, so we are going to take a left on Bravo. Okay, the maximum uh, taxi speed is 30 knots. And when making turns of 90 degrees or more, 10 knots. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Alright. Now let's focus on the taxiing. Okay, clear on the right, clear on the left. Make sure I got my bearings correct. We're going to turn right on runway two three. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we are uh, number one for departure. Once more, uh, thank you for choosing American Airline, and uh, we hope you'll have an enjoyable flight. November Enjoy the ride. Delta Delta, you're ready to copy IFR clearance. Zero Papa Delta Kilo. Remember, uh, 567 Delta Delta clearance is on its way. Stand by. So Echo. That's Fox Trot right there. So the next left is Echo.
clear right, clear left. Okay, we're going to advise the cabin. Yeah, this time we're just gonna follow the runway all the way so we can get rid of that chart. And now remember, six Delta Delta, or seven Delta Delta, you able to accept the uh, RNAV departure today. November 567 Delta Delta, say that again. Yeah, 7 Delta Delta, are you able to accept a RNAV departure? November 567 Delta Delta, Roger. I. Yeah, I'm safe. Yes, I will. Alright, 567 Delta Delta, I've got a full room clearance, just advisory to copy. Okay, November before uh, takeoff uh, checklist, uh, laps 5. Check. Uh, for that American 476, contact Charlotte Tower, 118.1 at the end of it. 118.1 for Charlotte Tower, 476. So long. Number 567, Delta Delta, clear to the uh, peace tree. Okay, now we are on tower frequency. And then 126.15 is, is our next frequency. There you go, okay. Cabin crew has been advised. Pitch trim is set. American 476, on will tie your American 476, uh, coming, up off, uh, coming up on the holding point and we're actually ready to go. American 476, landing. Tree, tree, zero. 330, we have it. Center, clear for takeoff. 330 after departure, clear takeoff, uh, runway 36 center, 476. Okay, strobe lights on. On the approach, clear on the left, clear on the right. And on the heading, we will do 330 upon departure, which is already set. And we can turn on our transponder to TARA, Traffic Advisory, and Resolution Advisory. And it seems like we already have some aircraft on the ND, and that's why we didn't want to turn it on before hitting the runway, otherwise we would be distracted. Alright, there you go. Now we're going to check everything. All right. We're going to set the chrono. We're going to advance the throttle above uh, 40%. We're going to lower our uh, controls, give us some more stability during the rollout. Okay, thrust set. At 80 knots, we're going to release the pressure, checked, and we're going to wait for our V1 and VR callout. Before V1, we can abort the takeoff. After V1, we have to take off. V1, V1, rotate. There you go, rotate, because if we try to stop after V1, we likely will not have enough runway. Gear up. Okay, 400 feet, we can start our turn towards heading 330. American 476, contract departure 126.15. Departure 126.15, American 476. So long.
Alright, there you go. Laps one. Departure, American uh, 476. We're leaving uh, 2,300 for 8,000. American 476 shot approach, good afternoon, good evening, actually. Uh, climbing team at 16,000, they proceed direct Bobsy. I'm having problems speaking at the moment, apparently. Roger there, direct Bobsy and climb and maintain 16, American 476. Okay. Flaps up. Okay. Auto brake off. Gear is locked. One six. One six is set. And then we can go direct Bob Z. There you go. And what we're gonna do now we can start a left turn and we're gonna set L nav. Basically we were on heading select. Now we are on uh, L nav. Basically we're gonna follow the flight path drawn by the computer. And we have an aircraft above us and descending. They are above us right now. They're at the. Uh, well, we're climbing, they're descending. So now we're at the same altitude, and now they're actually below us now. You can see them on the ND. Okay. Okay, we gotta make sure we don't bust the uh, speed limit, which is uh, 250 below. 250 below uh, 10,000. Then the next frequency is Atlanta Center. 132.907. Magnificent. Still flying manually. Now we can turn off the start switches, also turn off uh, all the lights except for the fixed landing lights. And we have busted the speed limit because we haven't been paying attention. We had allowed the nose to drop. Okay, let's raise the nose slightly so we can regain. Yeah, I was uh, afraid he was gonna get on us for busting the speed limit. All right, ten thousand. Change advisory approved. So long, American four seventy six. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, Atlanta Center anymore, so we will go to Unicom. Which is uh, 122.8. Okay, Unicom 1228. Okay. Alright. Okay. Autopilot coming on. Alright, now we're going to verify the uh, cabin altitude. It's at uh, 4,800 and climbing. It's unfortunate. Atlanta Center. Atlanta Center is online. I don't know what he's talking about. Alright, we're going to try Atlanta Center to see. Atlanta Center is online because you can see them right here. 132.97. There's only one way to find out. There they are. Atlanta Center, good evening. American 476 with you leaving uh, 14,300 for 16,000. Yeah, I can't check all the slots. I'll look for the survivor. 
Okay, so they are closing. Normally the controllers actually uh, chat amongst themselves. So that's why the other guy told me to go to advisory. So we're going to go to our final altitude of uh, 30,000 right now. There you go. And we'll keep climbing. And since we're climbing above the uh, transition altitude, we can set the standard barometer. We can set it since we're climbing and here we are on the departure as you can see Alright, so uh, where are we right now? Bob Z. So basically we had received a shortcut to Bob Z. And let's check our flight plan and see what it says with respect to getting to Bob Z. Okay, Bob Z after 11 minutes of flight with 13 point one ton of fuel nine minutes since we received the shortcuts so that's great and exactly 13 tons 13 tons of fuel so that's what keeps the pilots busy so we're going to also check the uh what you might call it uh cabin altitude which is still climbing so that's good we're good and we can uh turn off the seat belt sign right seat belt sign right now Sky is clear, weather is great. There you go. So, uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start checking our. Uh, those guys said they're closing, but they're still online on my other screen. Oh well, no biggie. Okay. Now we're gonna start programming our arrival because this is a very 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 short flight. So I believe we have the OZ1 arrival. There you go, OZ1 arrival and we will be taking runway 27 left. All right, the only thing is we're gonna hit Aussie at 14,000. If we're landing west, we're gonna expect 250 knots at Aussie at 12,000. So let's verify that. Aussie, we're gonna do 
250 at 12,000 because that is the posted restriction. There you go. And uh, why don't we do this? OZ Perry, no restriction. Kala at 9,000. It's already set here, as you can see. Kala at 9,000. And then after Kala, Posse at 8,000 or above. And then Sliver at 7,000 or above. We have that. Everything is uh, set. I don't know why we had ROM twice. We have Sylvia twice and we have ROM twice. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this ROM and we're going to insert it here and we're going to execute. There you go. And then after that, we have a depot and runway 27 left. Okay, if we're lucky, Atlanta Tower may still be online, which is the case right now. Checked. So, after about 13 minutes of flight, we have reached our amended cruise altitude of uh, 30,000. And Atlanta Tower is on 119.1. We're going to preset it. 119er point one and on final approach we are going to contact Atlanta Tower all right we have reached our cruising altitude hey, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen so we're leveled to our initial cruise altitude expecting a fairly smooth ride today we have the seatbelt sign turned off and while you're seated we do ask that you keep your seatbelt fast about you at all times in case we encounter unexpected bumpy air and we do uh, thank you for flying with us on American and it's very realistic from here at 30,000 there you go all right so Atlanta Let's find out. We're going to be checking the winds in Atlanta. One two two zero two five. Kilo Alpha Tango Lima. Airport information. Kilo two two five two Zulu weather. Wind three three five at one zero. Visibility one zero. Sky condition. Few clouds at one three thousand nine hundred. Ceiling one seven thousand nine. Hundred broken temperature one one two point minus two altimeter three zero one one advise on initial contact and you have information kilo okay we have information uh, kilo so the altimeter is uh, three zero one one we're going to preset it there you go three zero one one and the winds are uh, 335 at 10. Zero. So we're going to prepare our descent on forecast. We have uh, 30.11 for the altimeter. And at 1026, we have uh, 335 at 10. All right. Then what else do we have for winds? Okay, at uh, 15,000, we have 262 at 44. And then at 10,000, we have 271 at 31.
This will help the aircraft better manage the speeds and the descent profile. Okay, we are currently about 40 nautical miles from our descent. And uh, we are going to perform our descent checklist. We have already set the landing altitude to uh, 1050 anti-ice, not required. Uh, we're going to be taking runway 27 left. Uh, we have uh, enough fuel uh, currently for our flight plan, so no concerns for the approach. And for the IAS uh, bug, we are going to uh, take flaps uh, 40. She's going to give us a reference speed of 142. And our uh, minimum will be 1226. So basically our minimum, we're going to use the, the barometric uh, pressure as our, as our altitude instead of the radio altimeter. So 1226 for our minimum. There you go. And we're going to set course 275. And we're going to lower the MCP altitude to 7000 so that the aircraft can can begin the descent once reached. And the ILS frequency is 10850. We can set nav 2, we can set nav 1. Okay, so we'll get back to uh, our charts and uh, this is uh, DJS, let's find out, DJS uh, should reach it after 24 minutes of flight, we're going to reach it well before then, we're already at 19 minutes right now, and we should be there at about, with about 10.7 ton of fuel, we actually have 11.8. Awesome. Okay, 21 nautical miles from our descent. Okay, we're going to prepare by setting the seatbelt sign to on. And we're going to uh, check or we'll add few charts. We don't need the charts from our departure anymore. So an approach chart for two seven left. All right, and in case of uh, missed approach, we're gonna climb to fourteen hundred feet. Then we're going to turn left, uh, climbing to four thousand feet outbound on the Atlanta VOR to Tempo. And we're going to be holding on tempo until directed by ATC. And you saw earlier we set a frequency of 108.50. That's here. And tempo 
is the holding point in case of missed approach. So we're going to cross check that against our, uh, there you go, flat plan, as you can see, tempo 4000 and this one is a hold, right turn hold. All right, nine nautical miles. So we're going to alert the cabin. Up on, as you can see, we are descending. Uh, seatbelt sign is on. If you happen to be up and about, please return your seat. Keep your seatbelt fastened for the main flight. On behalf of the flight crew, we appreciate you being with us today. Wish you a very safe and pleasant journey to your final destination. Hope to see you back here with us soon. Thank you. Magnificent. It's awesome. Okay, since we are offline, the ATL traffic leaving flat level three zero zero. OZ one arrival. There you go. There you go. Now we have uh, began our descent. Throttle went to retard. Okay, drag required. So we're going to deploy the speed brake. We can maintain the target speed. Okay, what's going on? Okay, the problem is uh, of scheduled descent because there's something we did not do. So let's go here. I think it's gonna say air conditioning. There you go. So the problem is, the problem was that uh, after we got our flight plan amended, we never made it to 36, right? So I think we only made it to 30,000. So there you go. So that went away because we did see 30,000. Now, okay, recall check. So that's good. We don't have any more uh, warnings. There you go. So the pressure pressurization panel is uh, probably one of the most important panels on an aircraft because if set incorrectly, the pressure of within the aircraft could be not set properly therefore people can uh, black out basically and that is simulated on x-plane so for instance if I did not set uh, a cruising altitude or even if I did not have it on auto and had it on manual and never set it then uh, above uh, 12,000 feet we would actually start uh, basically uh, suffering from the lack of uh, oxygen and eventually if we don't do anything we would black out that's why we have oxygen masks all right so arrival time uh, we should be on the ground at about uh, 2349 Zulu And if you recall, we actually had uh, some delays getting off the ground. Let's see. Uh, 2348 estimated. Our scheduled arrival time was 2334, but estimated is 2348. So not too bad. With a total block time of 1 hour and 18 minutes. 
from uh, departure to arrival. Okay, we're gonna tune in to uh, the 80s in Atlanta on one niner six five. I think they just went offline. Not a problem. Yeah, tower just went offline in Atlanta. So we're going to have to be finishing this flight without any controllers. There's actually quite a bit of quite a bit of arrival still to come in Atlanta okay so we are going to uh, be descending below the transition altitude and we have already preset the uh, barometric pressure to 30.1 standard Okay, three zero point one set passing one seven eight check and cross check. Okay, we can reduce the range. So we're actually flying with the real weather and uh, what you're seeing with the clouds uh, coming and going it's the weather reloading so that it's uh, loading the latest weather stations. So we currently have an aircraft in front of us at about uh, 9,000 feet and they are about 10 nautical miles ahead of us descending. I believe they're also heading to Atlanta. So we're going to have to maintain a uh, separation with them. Not sure what their ground speed is. Their ground speed is 309 knots and our ground speed is 345 knots. So we definitely have to watch out for them. Alright, so preparing for OZ, the aircraft has started slowing down. We're gonna land it a hand by uh, deploying the speed brakes so we can get down to 250 knots or below on the speed and 12,000 
at OZ and you can see the restriction on the screen and we are right on profile for the descent all right now we have hit 12,000 but now the aircraft is just maintaining and slowing down okay we just passed OZ but we did bust the speed restriction at OZ because we are currently well above 250 knots so we are coming up uh, to within 30 nautical miles of the airport and as you can see we will be going slight left you know before reaching our final approach okay getting ready for 10,000 set the landing lights to on and the engine start switches we're gonna put them on uh, continuous in case of a flame out the engines will restart themselves So there you have it there's the weather reload I spoke of okay now the southwest aircraft is uh, it's a southwest aircraft because I was looking at the uh, online uh, users He's probably going for runway 26 right and we are gonna take runway uh, 27 but there is the airport So there we are as you can see so that guy was going to runway uh, two six so that's why he was off to our right sooner and we are going straight ahead for runway two seven left and we should be at eight thousand or higher at posse and we have leveled off at nine thousand after pussy the aircraft will uh, resume a shallow descent to seven thousand so our reference speed was 142 and like i said earlier the winds or uh, 335 at 10 we're going to take half of that for wind correction so we'll be landing with an approach speed of 147 
so basically with an approach speed of 147 uh, we're going to cross the threshold of the runway at about 50 feet right and at about 30 feet we're going to start our flare and what that will do it's gonna bleed off the speed it's gonna bleed off about five knots and the target landing speed is 142 so there is the airport straight ahead to our uh, right towards the uh, corner of the uh, co-pilot side thousand ago all right so we're gonna drop to 5,000 actually we're gonna drop to 4,000 is the go around altitude all right right now we're gonna maintain uh, 240 knots for the time being at about 10 miles out we'll be ready to deploy flaps one we'll probably take flaps one sooner than that so we can have a very stable approach there you go now the uh, glide scope is alive the localizer is alive so we're gonna set approach so we have captured both the localizer and glide scope we're going to turn on the second autopilot and what that will do it could even auto land the aircraft all right all right so i'm gonna take over on the speed control we're gonna slow down to 220 knots beautiful sunset beautiful Okay, we're going to set terrain on the ND. Alright, we are right on the uh, glide scope. About 15 nautical miles out. So we're going to keep our speed up. All right, now we can uh, drop to 190 knots, almost. Flaps one, that's gonna allow the aircraft to start slowing down. Though the winds are preventing us from doing that. Okay, we're gonna deploy spoilers. Yep, full blown spoilers. Okay, now we can drop down to 180 and we'll take 
Clubs 5. Twenty-five hundred. All right. We're about eight nautical miles out. At seven nautical miles out, we're going to deploy the landing gear. Okay, now we can stow the spoilers. In fact, we can arm the spoilers for landing. And we can set on the taxi lights. Okay, seven nautical miles. Go down. Flaps 15. And we immediately drop the speed to uh, flaps 15 speed. And as you can see, we're bleeding off speed very fast. Very, very fast. There you go. We can take flaps 20 and we can take our final approach speed of 147. Flaps 30 and flaps 40. Okay, landing checklist. Cabin crew has been advised. Landing gear down and three green. Speed brake is armed. Feet, Auto brake, level 1, flaps 40, landing checklist completed. Okay, I'm going to take control of the uh, aircraft. We're going to disconnect auto throttle and we're also going to disconnect autopilot, my aircraft. Okay, watch for the runway center. Five hundred. Speed is a little bit above target. No problem. Raise the nose slightly to bring the speed back down. Three hundred. Two red and two whites. Two hundred. Check. Minimums. Continue. 100 50 40 30 20 okay, flare and close the nose there you go magnificent Okay, we're gonna take this next high speed exit. We did auto brake level one. Alright. Flaps up. And uh, probe heat switches off, master caution, anti ice. Check. Auto brakes off. We can turn off the landing lights. And we can turn off the strobe lights as well. We can set the speed back down to 100. There you go. And we can start our APU. We can turn off engine start switches. And we're going to hold short of uh, runway uh, 27 right. We should have prepared for our taxi. There you go. We're gonna cross via Tango, and we're gonna take Terminal Tango. Oh, look at that takeoff! Awesome. 
that's the beauty of uh, flight simulation. All right. The ATL traffic crossing two seven right at Tango. There you go. Clear left, clear right. So if ATC was still online, basically we would have gotten our clearance to land and all that good stuff. There you go. Go straight ahead on Tango. And we're going to reset our trim to within the takeoff band, which is a green band. I believe American sometimes they park uh, down the other end of Tango but we're going to find us a gate and park it there oh this is beautiful screenshot all right so we're gonna park it right here so what we're gonna do Gonna put on the APU online. This is beautiful. You always overshoot it a little bit. I gotta give it some gas. One hour and three minutes so far. All right, we're going to follow the marshaler's instructions or guidance. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Arsfield Jackson International. We can shut off the engines, turn off the fuel pumps except for one since the APU is still on. Turn off the hydraulic pumps. We can turn off the anti-collision light and we can turn off the seatbelt sign and here is our beautiful aircraft nicely docked awesome there you go all right so we're gonna disconnect real quick and we're going to replay the landing
So there is our approach, our final approach into Atlanta. Basically, this is where we cross I-75. There's a flare. There you go. And we are down. All right, Dave. So I hope that uh, your simulator experience was a great one. And hope you did enjoy this. I guess we'll be talking to you soon. Just uh, call me sometime and uh, let me know how it, how it went. All right. Cheers, buddy.